Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church. I'm sitting in my home and having and preparing for Compline Night Prayer this evening on this eighth day of September. Today we are celebrating um, the commemoration of Soren Kierkegaard. This afternoon we also celebrated uh, a wonderful uh, pastor and theologian, uh, Nikolai Gorevsky. Uh, both of these men are from uh, the they're Finnish and or excuse me Danish. Pardon me <laughs> if you're Finnish. I, that's not an insult. Anyhow. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we celebrate Soren Kierkegaard uh, this evening. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer page 127 the lord almighty the lord almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end amen our help is in the name of the lord the maker of heaven and earth let us confess our sins to god almighty god our heavenly father we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty, the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is a portion of Psalm 22, found on page 610, page 610 in your Book of Common Prayer, or also found in your Holy Scriptures. Psalm 22, we'll be reading verses 1 through 11. Please join me as we recite and reflect on this beautiful psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my cry, and from the words of my distress? O oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, by night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you, believed, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and, you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and praised, despised by the people. All who see me laugh at me and to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb, and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures, our scriptures continue this evening with a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she... For she said to herself, If I only could touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, seeing her, and said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was saying today, we are celebrating the commemoration of Soren Kierkegaard, 
um, a young, uh, an amazingly bright uh, young man uh, throughout the time of his life uh, was born to, uh, in, to see his father and his uh, uh, future wife uh, bring him to seeing how life is so dark. And so as a philosopher um, and a well-proliferic uh, writer, he uh, learned in, very early on that the essence of learning was much more deeper in thinking and also learning how to hear uh, what people are thinking and saying and doing. Um, Kierkegaard was a child, uh, uh, only child of, or excuse me, he was a child of uh, multiple children, uh, but five of, uh, of the seven of the children died. Um, he was born in Copenhagen in 1813, and uh, he switched from studying theology to philosophy. And as many of you might know, uh, he became a prolific uh, philosopher uh, but he also wrote several pieces on theology himself. In 1840, being 27 years old, um, he was uh, betrothed to a Regine Olson, uh, 10 years his younger. He was completely in love with her, uh, but then, uh, and she herself. But then, as I said earlier, he decided to think about how his life wasn't quite right, and that he wanted to dive deeper into that darkness and sadness, uh, but he didn't want to dream, uh, bring Regina with him in that. Uh, she wanted to, he refused, and uh, they parted ways, but for the rest of his life he regretted uh, not being with her and the fact that he, she went and got married to an ambassador for, for Danish, for, uh, for the country, um, for Switzerland. In, in all these things, uh, he was probably the most uh, res uh, responsive with uh, George Hegel's work and on dialectic idealism. Uh, this is where we think of ourselves as uh, a reference point of what a, the argument might be, and then to uh, disregard what the original thought was and then dive deeper into uh, a, a new idea. I would go in deeper things by that, but I'm not going to. Martin Luther was also a, a wonderful love of his. Uh, he thought he, the world of him. Um, and then also he continued to dive into deeper things. We remember and give thanks for Kierkegaard uh, because of his life and love of philosophy and digging deep, deeper into the essence of uh, life itself. Um, we have a better understanding of how we think about life. And this passage from Matthew's Gospel just kind of reminds me and puts things in perspective when we think about, if only I could touch the Lord's cloak. As we go to bed tonight, you know, Kierkegaard was longing to touch the cloak of Jesus and to be healed, made to feel better about himself. You know, I hope as you go to bed tonight, I hope, you know, in many different ways, our lives are never perfect. But I think I find, for me, reflecting on the Lord's uh, messages and his teachings, I can still touch his cloak and feel the wonders of, and beauty and love of, of God, of Jesus Christ, in my life. And I hope you can too tonight, as you go to sleep, that the wonders of God are still around us and that the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of prayer, can be a part of that too for all of us. Amen. We continue our prayer, our Compline night prayers this evening on page 132, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, my sisters and brothers, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. Heavenly Father, whose beloved Son, Jesus Christ, felt sorrow and dread in the Garden of Gethsemane, help us to remember that though we walk through the valley of the shadow, you are always with us, that you, with your philosopher sword, sword and Kierkegaard, we may believe what we have not seen and trust where we cannot test. And so come at the length of your eternal joy, which we, we you have prepared for those who love you through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing be upon us always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we offer our prayers as people of God. Page 387, page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer. Prayers of the People, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the, in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We give thanks for all those who are celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries today. We especially give thanks for all those who are posting prayers of people that are special to you online right now. And those prayers we would respond to and lift them up in our hearts and minds. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for all those who are dear to us. I'd like to pray for the people of St. Peter's uh, on, near the, on the lake. Uh, we pray, O oh God, for their congregation and for the people of St. John's and their search process for a new priest and rector. We pray in thanksgiving for the people of Grace Episcopal Church here in Paducah and the ability to serve them as their rector and priest. We give thanks for all those who are our neighbors and our friends, for those who are seeking employment. We especially pray for those who are starting to reopen their businesses or those waiting to try to find employment. We pray, O oh God, that they may be successful and that we may be able to wear our masks and keeping our social distance so that can reopening our businesses can happen. I pray in thanksgiving for all the ushers who will be helping me and uh, uh, Jim Patton, our organist, and our lay readers this weekend uh, to help us begin reopening our church for in-person gatherings uh, at 10 a.m. and give thanks uh, for the staff at church at Grace Church that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We continue our prayers for the people of uh, 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 where uh, Hurricane Laura touched and those who are still without homes. We pray for the people in uh, California, Oregon, and uh, Washington State who are fighting forest fires, especially those in the Sahara Mountains. <clears throat> where the forest fires have been raging and the terrible heat wave uh, have been going through. We pray for all the firefighters and those who are battling those, uh, those terrible fires, those first responders, police officers, state troopers all over the country uh, who are battling natural disasters, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon you. We especially pray in thanksgiving for the lives and souls that are welcome into your kingdom this day, Lord. And we pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, who've lost their lives because of this terrible virus around our nation, our state, and our world. We pray for all of our doctors and nurses, nurses who are battling this terrible disease. We pray, O oh God, for them and their safety. 
let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let, may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I'd like to offer this time to, if you'd like to post a prayer online, please do so. We'll lift them up afterwards in my own personal prayer. I'd like to pray for my wife um, and her, her rehabilitation for her frozen shoulder. I pray for those who are undergoing surgery uh, this week. I especially like to remember those uh, who are remembering 9-11 and uh, family members who lost loved ones during that period of time. We pray, O oh God, for all uh, the farmers who are starting harvesting. We pray for uh, climate weather uh, for, for the harvest and for your help and well-being, Lord. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We continue our prayers on page 134, page 134 at the bottom. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty, the merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I hope that you have a great sleep to be at rest and to wake refreshed tomorrow morning. Please join me again tomorrow at noon and right here again at 9 p.m. If you like this kind of spirituality and think you might have a friend or someone that might benefit from it, share it with others uh, on your Facebook site. Have a great sleep. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Sweet dreams. <laughs>